Someone broke into an elderly man's home and knocked him out. Now police need your help finding the person behind the crime. An emotional day in a Floyd County courtroom as prosecutors play 911 calls and Barry Hall's interview following a deadly shooting in 2008. Uh, I shot at her, yes, I shot at her. Did you shoot at anybody else? I shot on the porch of him. He came out and said he was going to kill somebody and I just shot him. We'll see those cloudy skies continue with a few more rain chances as we head into the last few days of January. More on that right now at 6. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Tonight, police need your help in Letcher County. A home break-in in the Cowan community left a 60-year-old man unconscious and in the hospital. Officials are still trying to figure out the timeline. WYMT's Emily Bennett is live in Letcher County with the latest. Emily? Steve, yesterday morning, officials believe two individuals broke into the home here behind me. They say homeowner Scott Day was asleep on the couch. They heard a loud noise and stood up from the couch, and that is when he was attacked and knocked unconscious. He has severe head injuries and was transferred to UK Medical Center for treatment. Police are left figuring out a timeline and any leads. They called 911 around 9 a.m. when he regained consciousness. But police believe the, believe the incident happened hours before. They do not have any leads on who the individuals were or what was stolen. There was some damage to the uh, front door. It appeared some glass maybe had been broken out. And that's possibly how these individuals were able to uh, come in. The, the door had been locked as far as uh, the victim advised. Now, police tell me that they do need people to help on any leads as Dave does not remember anything and there was no surveillance footage. I'm live in Letcher County, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. All right, Emily, thank you. And we hope to have more on this at 11. A deadly crash and officer involved shooting is the big story tonight in Pike County. The two incidents happening only hours and about 100 yards apart. The two vehicle crash occurred first around 4 a.m. One person died, another went to the hospital. Hours later, while troopers investigated that scene, Elkhorn City Police called for help with a chase. It ended a short distance from where troopers were attempting to reconstruct the crash. Investigators say the driver tried to hit one of the troopers. An officer then fired at the car, killing the driver. Now we have a reporter talking to police right now about this accident and shooting, and we hope to learn more soon. And we'll have that on WYMT.com and ha have an update, of course, at 11. The case of a man accused of shooting a deputy is heading to a grand jury. This is William Mosley. Earlier this month, they say he shot Leslie County Deputy Shane Wilson in the hand. Here is video of that scene. Wilson survived the shooting, of course. Mosley faces first-degree assault and wanton endangerment charges, among others. A grand jury will decide whether or not to indict him. Mosley's bond is $100,000 cash. One Knox County woman is facing charges after driving under the influence with three children in her car. Police say on Monday, Nicole Sanders was driving along Green Road on Highway 11 when she ran into a tree and then down an embankment. Sanders, along with her 10, 3, and 7-year-old kids, were flown to University of Kentucky Hospital for critical injuries. Unfortunately, you know, we see, we see several of them. Uh, but, you know, to the fact that their mother was impaired and driving these three small children, you know, is, is tragic. Sanders is facing charges of wanton endangerment and driving under the influence. Also in Knox County, charges were dismissed against two women in a robbery case. Court officials tell us a lack of evidence led to prosecutors dismissing Courtney Simpson and Jennifer Gray's case without prejudice. That means if more evidence services, they can reopen the case. Simpson and Gray were initially charged with complicity in a robbery at A&B Quick Stop. Four people total were arrested. Only Alex Toothman, who you see there, still faces charges. Police say he's actually the man who robbed the store. His case is in the hands of a grand jury. Charges were also dropped against his father, Russell. 
Day two of the Barry Hall retrial began this morning in Floyd County. Officials say he killed two people in 2008. A few years ago, the Kentucky Supreme Court overturned his conviction due to the graphic pictures used during the trial. WIT's Marion Fletcher was there today as the jury was shown multiple pieces of evidence. A hard day for the Tackett family. As 911 calls echoed in another silent courtroom. Officials believe in 2008, Barry Hall killed Alan Tackett and his wife Lisa during an argument over a dog on Barry's property. This can't handle it. Okay. So when they were, when they were screaming and hollering, okay? This can't handle it. Witness testimony recalled Barry walking upstairs and opening fire outside his bedroom window. I shot at her, yes, I shot at her. Did you shoot at anybody else? I shot on the porch at him. He came out and said he was going to kill somebody, and I just shot him. The sound you just heard is from an interview between a Kentucky State Police Trooper and Barry the night of the shooting. Good, bad, or indifferent, doesn't matter what it is, can be brought up again in court. Multiple pieces of evidence was shown, including crime scene photos, 911 calls, bullet casings, and the gun believed to be used in the shooting. Detective Newsom asked him if he remembered which gun was used. He said, my dear gun, the 30 6 Hall was not in the courtroom during testimony. In Floyd County, Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Hall's trial continues tomorrow at 9 a.m. in Floyd County. And we've seen those clouds really throughout the day, but some of us got in on a little bit of some sunshine action. You'll notice as we take a look at Interstate 75 into London, they saw peaks of sunshine throughout the day, but those mostly cloudy skies taking over as we head into tonight. Whitesburg, though, we saw those clear skies. Clouds now starting to creep back in as we head into tonight. Lower 40s for them right now. A lot of us, though, were on the chilly side, especially those that saw cloud cover. Areas along I-64, that big sandy region, has seen a lot of that cloud cover for today. The Cumberland Valley got a little bit of a break. Like I said, more is on the way as we head into tonight. We'll be dropping into those lower 30s with mostly cloudy skies. And we'll continue those cooler temperatures for a few days, but warmer air is on the way along with a few scattered rain chances. I'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Paige. Governor Andy Bashir will give his first budget address tonight in front of Kentucky lawmakers. It's expected the budget will list several priorities for the administration, including a $2,000 raise for teachers, pensions and funding last year's school safety bill. The governor's budget is also expected to address criminal justice reform and potentially health care. The two year spending plan must be approved before the General Assembly adjourns on April 15th. Another key aspect that could come up is infrastructure. During his first State of the Commonwealth address, the governor mentioned wanting to speed up the Mountain Parkway project. Within the past couple of months, crews finished up Restaurant Row. WIMT's Katie Cook is in the newsroom. She talked to the mayor of Salyersville about the impact of the project. Katie? Steve, the message from Governor Brashear sent waves across Salyersville, bringing plenty of optimism. Workers began the construction about four years ago, and recently they wrapped up an important segment along Restaurant Row, though other parts have yet to even begin. The finished product will provide quicker trips for those traveling the parkway connecting eastern and central Kentucky. Some believe it could provide a real boost to the economy. The mayor of Salyersville says the faster the road work is complete, the better. You need transportation, you need good road systems, and this is what, uh, what we need for eastern Kentucky to thrive. It took four years here in Restaurant Row, and that's quite a bit of time to disrupt traffic and, and the citizens of Salyersville, especially with the way this is doing it. Steve, Governor Bashir will begin his budget address around 7 tonight and we'll have highlights of the governor's speech at 11. All right, Katie, thank you. Lawmakers are considering a bill to keep students safe at the bus stop. The proposal would require cameras attached to school bus stop arms. That camera would detect any driver who goes past the stop sign while children are getting on and off the bus. Chelsea Jones talked to the bill's sponsor who explains why this change is needed. 
Representative Robert Goforth says illegal passing around school buses is a serious problem in Kentucky. Uh, extrapolate that out, that's 2,667 illegal passes in a day in a 180-day school year. During a House Transportation Committee meeting, he told lawmakers there's more than 4,000 illegal passes around school buses each year. But he's hoping a bill he's sponsoring will put a stop to it. It passed unanimously um, because it's common sense legislation. House Bill 34 would require all state school buses to have stop arm cameras installed. So when a school bus stops and the door is open, the stop arm comes out. That activates our video. Um, once the stop arm closes, deactivates the video. So within that time frame, we have people that actually review uh, those events. The cameras would capture the license plate numbers of vehicles passing by. Violators would face the $300 fine for the first offense and a $500 fine for the second offense. When Representative Goforth pre-found the bill in August, many school officials had concerns about the cost. But Goforth says the cameras will not only pay for themselves, but would generate revenue for the state. It should generate about $145 million a year, which 80% of that will go to the school district, 10% to KDE, and 10% to the transportation cabinet. Representative Goforth said vendors would install the cameras at no cost to school districts. In fact, vendors would monitor the devices and issue and collect the citations for a percentage of the citations. I'm Chelsea Jones, WYMT Mountain News. If the bill becomes law, drivers who refuse to pay the fines will have their car registration suspended. Drivers accused of illegally passing the one-stop cameras will have a right to an appeal. 22 states already have similar laws. Perry County joined a long list of Kentucky counties today, becoming a Second Amendment sanctuary. A large crowd gathered at the fiscal court meeting. Perry County Judge Executive Scott Alexander says he received support from other elected officials about this. The Second Amendment sanctuary passed unanimously. We believed uh, in your Second Amendment right of the U.S. Constitution and your right of the Kentucky Constitution to keep and bear arms. And we just uh, reaffirmed that today to the citizens of Perry County. The resolutions express opposition to gun regulations. And we're going to see warmer temperatures as we head into the next few days. But how long will those rain chances last? And is sunshine on the way? I'll have all of that coming up in just a little bit. But first, we'll show you how one sweet treat you will find in Canada is actually being made right here in the mountains. 